morning, good afternoon, and good evening wherever you are in the world. Today, we are all on a frozen river in Alaska. We are headed to our cabin. I think we're about a third of the way there and it's going to be a long journey today. Probably close to five hours because we are going super slow for the dogs. Pulled over and we're going to have some snacks. We brought along all kinds of snacks, but we're gonna dive into some banana muffins that Ariel made the other day. She froze a bunch of these, so we got a bunch of these ready for the trip. And we got a bunch of snacks. We brought some good food this time around. Mm. Where we're at right now is a, a point that we always like to kind of stop. It's where two rivers join. So we were just on one river. Now we're on the next river. Like Ariel said, we're about a third of the way there. I think we've been about maybe 17 miles or so. We're letting the dogs out. They're taking a break. Come here, bro. They're doing good. Hey dude, you want a muffin? Too bad. Let's head over to the dog sled and I want to show you guys a few modifications we made to it. Along with the heavy duty bumper that we already put on and the hitch, I ended up taking out our bolts on the actual hitch and on the chain and I replaced those all with grade eight bolts. So we have the strongest bolts we can get in there. And then my neighbor was also nice enough to let me use his welder. So I welded the hitch and the safety chain onto the trailer. Pretty solid now. We stuck a bicycle inner tube around the safety chain so it doesn't scratch up our bumper. And you might notice that the dogs have a new windshield. It looks similar to the last one, but it's not. It was more expensive and it's a lot stronger. This is Lexan. I believe that's how you say it. And we went to uh, the local kind of plastic shop that specializes in plastic and fiberglass. And he hooked us up with this awesome piece of windshield for the dogs. And he assured us that this thing will not break even in the cold temperatures. One last thing is we took off the old tie downs and we replaced all of them with these nice heavy duty ones. I think these are a 1000 pound tie down. So hey, should be good to go. So far we've just been Stopping every few miles, eating some snacks. It's a really nice day out here. It's probably about 10 degrees right now, and I think the high is gonna get close to 30. So we're kind of lightly dressed and we're having a great ride on the river so far. Good muffin? Mm-hmm. We also made a few quiches for the trip. They're like mini cupcake quiches are really good. And today we've actually been seeing the Iditarod teams go by the mushers and their dogs. We've seen three so far. I, I think the person who won actually finished last night. I could be wrong. We weren't planning to, to run into them today because we were actually planning to get out on the river yesterday, but we ended up being out here today a day late and it's really awesome to see them again. Look how mean Bo is. Well, that just about does it for our little break. Got a little over 40 miles to go. We're gonna head down the river. Come on. Bennett, can you get in there? Get up there. Hey, you jumped last time. Get in there, get in there. Come on, Bo.
it. That, that was not. That was a lot of powder. There was like, you see all the overflow and stuff? The old overflow, yeah. Old overflow. Look how nice this trail is. We made it. Five hours later, we made it. Oh my gosh. It's crazy. I didn't think we'd ever get here. Bandit, come. Trip went well. Everyone's alive. The dogs made it in good shape. Very excited we made it out here one last time. What are you doing, pup? Oh, you having fun? Bo, you made it again, dude. That's old overflow. You know what that is? A perfect fishing spot. That is good fishing. We're gonna head up and start a fire. It's not actually that cold right now. And try to get Eric's machine up there again. That worked really well last time. Book one! So he's having a hard time getting up the hill. Dave, you may need to help him. He's tired. Good job, Bo. Do you need water? Stay, Bo. Stay here. Come on, Benny. You want to go outside with us? Clean last time we came here. A little over a foot. A lot of fresh snow out here. Come across that lake, we hit some deep powder. So, and then our whole walkway needs to be packed down again. I'm sure we'll get our snowshoes on, and pack it down so we can walk around while we're here. We're gonna go down and get some more stuff from the sled and get some water for the dogs. Bennett, go on, go, Daddy. Go, go have fun. He likes going. <laughs> it did work really well. That was really fun. I think that's my new preferred method. There's way more. This is pretty good. Like, it's not quite this heat. I'm taking my lunch break. This ain't no union. Get to work. Look, I'm still working. Oh my gosh. You got that? Nope. <laughs> I was gonna help. I was gonna maybe try to like drag it while you pushed it. Fun. Work. Oh, just work. Abuse my body. <laughs> I really was slipping right there. It gets steeper as it goes up higher. Yeah, I know. Getting the house warmed up. It's starting to feel pretty good in here. I'm pretty sure it's above freezing now. It's pretty late in the day, actually. I think it's like 
4 30 in the afternoon it took us a while to get here the sun this time of year does not go down till a little after eight o'clock so we still got a bunch of time this evening to do whatever we want we brought fishing stuff we brought a couple tip-ups and the ice auger so we might do some pike fishing we brought pretty much the normal stuff we bring but one thing kind of cool that we brought was the cast iron skillet that we found out here this is the griswold she's looking good and ready to cook some good food for us while we're here when we bought the cabin we realized that it came with a ton of this fuel um little camping fuel we've got four gallons here unopened so we were like we need to get something to use that so we bought a really cool lantern we have not used it and we left it in the packaging we figured the padding would be good for the trip up here and this is a deets it's their model 80 and this is a this is a, one of their bigger lanterns so should be pretty cool to have this thing out here there are a lot of different lanterns you can get we tried to just find one that would fit our needs so that's her we got a nice black one it's a beautiful lantern we'll get this thing filled up with fuel test it out a little bit later what we were using up here we we're just using flashlights we have our little o lights with the lantern attachment and then we have a uh, coleman propane lantern we brought up a couple more jugs of propane for that thing the propane lanterns are really nice because they're super bright but they go through the propane really fast and since we had that fuel we wanted to use that and then we got one other thing we brought up Ariel found these really cool slow burning paraffin wax candles. So we got three of these and then the cabin came with one. So we're gonna be lit up in this little cabin. Also brought our little mini camping stove kit and we brought a lot of food and we're gonna eat because we're really hungry after that long ride in. in there. Look at him. Oh, it's, a, it's okay. Did you see him? You okay? Does he smell food or something? He's in a cocoon now. He's good. Yes. Oh, all right. More balls. Oh, oh yeah. This is all the frozen stuff that I want to see. I think that we'll like have all this energy the day we get here, you know what I mean? Oh my Fish. gosh, I feel great. I feel great enough to do some things, like fishing, you know what I mean? Rich crackers? Especially because we don't have a big manual hole, but... Oh my gosh, can you imagine? No, no I couldn't. I'm actually uh, interested to see how thick ice is and how the ice is and what it looks like. Yeah, I know, I just have to go with the overflow though because the snow's so deep. Out awesome. there, we'd have to bring a shovel. Yeah, we got a shovel. I think we averaged closer to 10. Not quite 10, like probably... Like 11 miles an hour? Maybe? Probably, yeah, 12. 12, and 12. So the mushrooms would have passed us. <laughs> One guy was like, how many teams have you passed so far? No way, what you Yeah, he was like, how many teams have gone by you? And I was like, four. He's like, all right. <laughs> I need to know where I am in the race. <laughs> what mountain is that, you know? It must be Mount Susina. Now that Eric and I have eaten lunch, we thought it'd be really fun to show you guys all the food we bring, kind of how we pack it. This is our third time out here successfully with the dogs and we just kind of learned some things. It's not the easiest ride in. There are a lot of bumps, especially this late season. I mean, you literally go over thousands and thousands of bumps. First off, we have two ways that we separate our food. One's for stuff that can get frozen. So because it's so cold sometimes when we come, if it's like negative 10, the things that you have exposed to that temperature are obviously gonna freeze. And then we have a pack back here that Eric keeps little warmers in and that way the food in there doesn't freeze this is the one that can freeze and we put a lot of stuff in here <laughs> as you know we're big on trying to you know hunt harvest produce a lot of our own food but obviously we do not produce all of our own food and for trips out here 
It is a little inconvenient to bring our own stuff, not just because getting out here is tricky, but also, you know, making it out here too and then cleaning it. We also don't want bears to smell all the food when it comes to springtime. This is eggs. We decided to bring eggs all pre-scrambled, so they're ready to go for breakfast. Other jarred items we brought is a cornbread. I actually made this. It's cornbread mix that I made at the house. I've got some coconut oil in there. We're gonna be making some cornbread. We brought our BBQ sauce, cream for coffee, salsa, and some cowboy candy. As far as dry goods, we also try not to leave any of that stuff really out here. We have like some backup beans and rice, but bears can smell pretty much anything. So you don't want to, we don't want to leave that kind of stuff out here. Eric brought some rice, herbs. We've got a whole bunch of spices in here. I've got a little dessert plan. We've got some hot chocolate too. A little while back, a subscriber was nice enough to gift us a whole bunch of these mountain houses. So we have these and I will say this has been so convenient and just simple because you have to bring a lot of food out here, especially when it's cold and you're burning a lot of calories. And sometimes we'll bring all this food and it's still not enough. You know, we'll run short. So these are awesome. Of course, we had to bring the Timmies. We got some Tim Hortons for Eric and some coconut milk and a little condensed milk for our dessert. We've got Ritz crackers back here. We picked these up for the salmon salad. Just easy, convenient. Everything that we bring out here, I mean, there's like a thought process behind it because is it something that's light that's gonna get smashed like this? Is it something that has plastic in it that you're gonna need to bring back with you? So we have to think about those types of things. We also have potatoes, garlic for breakfast. Over here in the windowsill, I have some milk. We brought milk in these jars and we wrap these jars with towels and rags and then we have to wrap them again on the way back. They're pretty durable, but we gotta be careful with them. Other things we brought are, these are banana nut chocolate chip muffins I made and froze. They're awesome out here, really quick, you know, snack bite sized things. And then we also have little Powerball things that we made a while back, these quiche cupcakes. And this kind of stuff's really good for us when we're out on the river, we're hungry, it's just bite sized, just pop in your mouth and get going. I'm not a big fan of plastic bags and Ziplocs just cause they're, I like to reuse them. I just don't like buying that kind of stuff. So it's kind of not my, my preferred method to bring stuff out here in, um, but it works really well compared to glass. And lastly, we have a moose roast and some of our Anaheim peppers. We're gonna be using this for breakfast and dinner. So that's a wrap for everything we brought. It's clearly a lot easier to bring packaged food or pre-made food because cooking out here isn't quite ideal. And I'm sure we'll kind of figure out what works best for us over the years. I think we're gonna make some coffee and then head outside to see if we can punch some holes and catch some fish. <laughs> well, I'm always one for having a cup of coffee, but change of plans. We're going fishing. We're gonna have coffee when we get up here later. Is that what happened? I guess. Oh my gosh. How could there be some person there? There we go. Okay. Now we're ready to fish. So I think this is a good spot. Eric's gonna drill a hole. And we are only targeting, well, actually there's more than pike out here, but we are targeting pike.
That was thick. Almost had to have an extension. Never had to drill through ice that thick. Pretty cool. Got through. Hey, I bet you can get through the other hole too. Probably, huh? Maybe we should set this one to see how deep it is. Yeah. Maybe we should get an extension for that. We're using hot dogs again. We got one that broke in half, so I'm gonna put half on because I want to check the depth of this water. See where we're at. First hole at the new cabin. See if there's any fish in this lake, right? This is perfect. About six feet of water. And there's four feet of ice? Three and a half feet of ice? Three, three and a half, yeah. Cool. This will be perfect. What do you mean? Should we go out further and drill a new hole? That shovel thing that I did last time? Went through. Oh. Alright, went through, but barely. Yeah, it's about seven feet. A little deeper. Perfect. We've never fished this lake. Don't really know what we're doing out of this one, so we're just trying right in front of our cabin. Um, I think if we don't catch it any day, we'll probably fish again tomorrow. But here in Alaska, you need to attend your tip-ups. So luckily our cabin's right there. I'm gonna finish making our cup of coffee and we're gonna watch for our flags to go up. It'd be awesome to catch a piker out here. <laughs> Well, we came up to the cabin to finish off our coffee and our water wasn't boiling yet on the stove. So I figured I'd get out my little camp stove. And unfortunately, somewhere on the trip, it kind of came undone. And no, I don't think it broke. I think it just came unscrewed. But you gotta position these things exactly the right way or else it won't go together. So I'm trying to see if I can fix this thing. So we have had, well, not a lot, but we've had some stuff break on our trips out here. So we're slowly learning how to pack stuff and what can kind of make the journey out here and what just doesn't cut it. And apparently this little camp stove, she didn't cut it this time. Okay, I think I got it back together how it actually goes. Let's see if we can heat up our water, make some coffee. This is gonna be one heck of a cup of coffee. Been waiting for one of these all day. We're tired, we're gonna drink this coffee. We're gonna sit on that deck and we're gonna keep an eye on our tip ups. This is my kind of fishing here today. Oh gosh. It's extremely hot. It's really hot. It's quite delicious, but I could use a little sugar. I know. I should have brought a little sugar. We didn't bring sugar. Oh well. Mm. Can't have sugar out here, babes. I'm gonna walk down and get a closer look. Okay. <sighs> no luck yet.
taking a little evening stroll down here on the lake. This is one of the trees on our property. I don't know if you can tell, but the top of that, maybe like the top half of that tree fell off since the last time we were here. The last time we were out here is when we took down those trees around the cabin. So I'm glad we got them down. These trees, these dead ones, they fall all the time. So it is mid-March and it's pretty cool we came back out to the cabin. We weren't really sure if we would get another trip in because the ice, you never really know when things can break up and it's been a little warm, you can get overflow. Clearly there was a lot of overflow here at one time and you can hear that crunch is ice. So it's not snow I'm walking on, I'm walking on ice, which means there was overflow at one time, like slushy ice and it's hardened again now. You just gotta remember to be really careful out here. Eric and I are pretty cautious. We've learned a lot in the few winters we've been here about overflow and getting stuck and being all by yourself. So we don't want that to happen. We didn't catch any fish today. We're gonna pull the tip ups and we're gonna head up to the cabin. It's starting to get a little dark out. I tried to come down here without my snowshoes on and I sunk in like a foot of overflow. I don't know if you can see right here. That's overflow. It really sucks getting stuck in that stuff. So we're gonna get our stuff. We're gonna head up to the cabin. Got me a hot dog. Eric thought it'd be pretty clever to put this rope here. Actually, I think it was my idea, but <laughs> Eric did it. Really excited about this because it's actually pretty difficult to come to and fro. It's very slippery, so we slide a lot. This is perfect. We made it back up and we are inside the cabin for the night. We got our slippers on and everything. We're gonna see if we can get this little lantern fired up. Uh, both of us have actually never used one of these, but it's pretty simple, I think. You just pop it up and light it, but first we're gonna fill it up with some of our fuel. I don't have a little funnel, so I'm gonna put like a little rag down or something. All right, I'm gonna put some paper towels down, so I'm probably gonna spill a little bit. Let's see, if we, let's see if we can fill this up. Whew! Drink that. Well, that wasn't working, and I went looking around the little cabin to see if there was a little funnel here, and there's actually a fuel filler made by Coleman, and a filter funnel, so sweet. I think this is, oh yeah, this is perfect. It has a little filter on it, you can use that, and then what's this? I think this hooks right to it. No, that doesn't hook there. I don't know what this hooks to. Yeah, it says it hooks right on install on Coleman fuel can. That's not Coleman, that's Chevron. Yeah, maybe it just doesn't fit the, just doesn't fit this one. Anyways, cool, we'll use this, right? Sweet. Let's see if this thing lights. I don't know if you have to let it sit the first time you use it or not, let's see. Oh my gosh. Oh my, was that for real? That was for real. I think I need to tone down that wick a little. Is it supposed to be doing that? I don't, I think you should extinguish the fire. You can't extinguish it by blowing it out, can you? Oh. So. I wasn't expecting that. Uh, I'm gonna take this thing outside and see if we can light it. All right, so in the manual, this thing has to get up to like operating temperature. So there might be some smoke at the beginning. I'm gonna, it said it'll take about five minutes. So I'm gonna let this thing burn for about five minutes and we'll see where we're at. Well, we got it going, thanks to Ariel. It said you want the wick a 16th of an inch above the flame plate. And I thought that little 
you know globe part and there was a flame plate but this is the flame plate and I lowered it down so that's lowered down that's raised up so I got it cranked way down in there you can go real low or you can go just about like that this is awesome really cool lantern we got like I said we have four gallons of fuel for this thing and I forget what the specs are on this lantern but we bought this one because it puts off a pretty good flame and it burns for a long time these things are really efficient so Really cool little lantern. Let's bring it inside. Pretty cool. Not a, not a crazy amount of light at all. I mean, it's a it's a little lantern, but that's pretty nice. Way brighter than like a few candles. So let's get another candle going. We're getting all the lights going. Lighting up the little cabin. We're getting ready for dinner. We're making something. Well, I think it sounds pretty good. I'm gonna do like uh, some moose steaks and then we're gonna do a coconut mushroom white rice. Should be awesome. Getting ready to cook and I just realized that I forgot my little container of olive oil at home. So we're gonna improvise. I think Ariel's got a little bit of extra coconut oil and then we're just not gonna use oil. So I got my rice here, I got my herbs, I've got some dried mushrooms and we bought a can of coconut milk. This is what we're gonna be cooking the rice in. And I'm also gonna first soak these mushrooms in a little bit of the coconut milk and a little bit of water. Who was your favorite character on SpongeBob SquarePants? Sponge. The Sponge, huh? Me too. Everyone loved the SpongeBob. Well, I mean, yeah, who are you gonna like? Plankton? Squidward? Oh. Mr. Um, Krabs. Mr. Krabs. Is there any way I could get like a dab? You try some. Is it not good? Oh my gosh. Be good in coffee. Um, I think I would like to bathe in this. <laughs> it's like, uh... Do you have that it's one? like lotion. Get out of here. Are you serious? <laughs> You're gonna eat it all. All we're doing is rehydrating these mushrooms. We have morels, which are like that. That's a little small one. And then we have, uh winter chanterelles, or they also call them yellowfoot chanterelles. Those are probably my favorite mushroom I have ever eaten. We'll let these soak for probably about, I don't know, 15 or 20 minutes. I'm gonna get our moose roast over here. I'm gonna get a couple steaks cut up off of it. It's still frozen, so we'll see what we can do. So these are the knives that came with the cabin. I researched them when I got home. They're a Japanese knife, uh, National Cutlery. I don't think they make them anymore. I saw some for sale on eBay, but they seem like pretty high quality knives, and these ones are razor sharp. They look brand new. Let's see how they do cutting through this moose roast. Oh my gosh, look at that. This knife is so sharp. Please be careful. All right, this turned out great. That coconut smells amazing in there. We're gonna eat, and I think we're gonna hit the sack pretty soon after it's been a long day. Careful, it's hot. Thanks, baby. We gotta share that knife. Oh. Is the meat any good? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's spicy. Mm-hmm. 